Yeah, we're not going to get to all in the Zoom, but that's all right. No, I understand. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone, for waiting for us. Uh, we've got DHL Storms head coach, John Dobson. We've got the captain, Stephen Kitsop, and we've got the Heineken star of the match, Dan Duplessis. For well, your questions, yeah, and then we've got to Zoom. Yes, Gavin. Uh, Dobbin, today, it's sort of a pop like it was almost like I was a cricket match, a test match. It was the first day of the flat afternoon, and you were the captain. And you, <laughs> and, you, and, you, and you threw the ball to your boat, and well, nothing was happening. And then suddenly you threw the I mean, in other words, I'm talking about your substitute. Yeah. You sort of threw the ball to the sort of certain bowlers, and suddenly everything changed. You got the breakthrough. Is it like that for you? Yeah, I was, unfortunately, was. Um, we uh, were so flat in the first half, disjointed. I think we, we have to give his good credit to. Which I didn't realize at the time, because you know, when you coach, you always look at your own team. I think the way Claremont defended, I think there's a stat that I'm, I could be corrected now. I think they made 112 tackles in the first half, and they only missed three. And we just faced with a brick wall the whole time. So probably we, we made a, you know, we sort of felt, but I felt we were flat and disjointed. And, you know, when you've got all Jean, I know that he's a duplicity, so he's mad, JL, but he'll bring mm -hmm. some spark, uh, he'll bring some spark to the game. Uh, Herschel is, you know, we just needed more speed in that game. <laughs> And so it's it's not nice substituting guys in 44 minutes. You know, we've probably got done before half time. That's that's inhumane. You know, and I thought that they they all made a difference. BJ, everybody, you know, Brocky's hand. You know, it, it it was, um, yeah. So I, I think it was you know, we tossed the tossed tossed the ball to the to it to the whole, to some brothers. Yeah. Well, what what was it that I just that the execution probably was the key thing because first half we got there, yeah. not going turnover penalty. Yeah, I mean, they didn't get in that first half. They didn't get 122-meter entry. It was just those you know, the defensive penalties, which, which were poor. Now, I think, you know, it, it, it was a team spiraling in the first half. I mean, Kitsi would say, oh, we were ourselves, you know. We were, you could see guys looking at each other. Why didn't you do this? And that was a spiral. And I think just in the second half, we reset at halftime. Kitsi spoke to them well, and then we just became more direct. and. That's what we have to, always have to do with this team. I mean, we saw the intercept that we gave away, which was probably what we shouldn't have. That was the sort of malaise we had in the first half. Um, but the second half, we were direct and, well, I mean, some outstanding play. Which you play. Stephen, just the scubs, uh, first off, you know, I sort of I penalised him really for walking around the corner. Well, what exactly went on? It was pretty near, obviously, it was in a mic game, but if he was playing for. Yeah, um, I must say, like, Clement's got a big heavy pack and um, there was going to, we knew from the beginning they were going to come with some some good old fashioned, fashioned French scrum style and and come get away with a couple of tricks. So I think that first penalty was in our favour, clearly uh, injuring the scrum and and we getting the penalty. But towards the the back end of the game, uh, I felt we started getting uh, both the innings and we started actually getting a bit of dominance. So we knew that the scrum was going to be 50-50 in the beginning, and we just had to to fight it out till the end. Dan, the second half, it seemed like the shackles came off a bit and more people already uh, on attack ball in the end. What do you think was different? Yeah, I think as as Dobbo said, um, a lot lot less unforced errors and a lot less penalties. Um, I mean, the penalty count, I'm not sure what it was, but pretty high in the first half. So we put ourselves under pressure. Um, and then obviously a change in the in the, the halfback combination and Again, as Dava said, it could other halfback combination could have started and could have been the same story. I think it was just a matter of them taking out that first punch and then yeah. uh, the fresh legs coming on and um, obviously making a difference. And for you with that time, uh, I'd like to hear, but also thinking with Herschel. With Herschel, with that, with Joseph. Oh, with Joseph. Yeah, with Joseph. Yeah, he said I must give him the credit. For that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I know. I think he, he almost just threw it on the on the right hand side of him. He, he said I spoke to him, I can't remember, but but he just threw it on the right hand side and the gap opened up. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be so that's quickly about your partnership with one now. Obviously he was uh, injured briefly and they came back. Yeah. Let's talk about how you guys uh Joe well you obviously got to pass now. Mm. Yeah. Um yeah, I think we feed off each other, we we give each other confidence. Um yeah, he gives me a lot of confidence, especially on defense. You know, he's just he's just got that what's the word demeanor or whatever. I don't know if that's the right word, but um he carries that confidence and he gives the guys inside him um um the power to you know go up as well and he goes hard and um 
especially the, with the reads he makes, he puts the team on the on the front foot. Um, so yeah, I enjoy playing with him and yeah. Uh, obviously the first one to go to according to plan. Obviously, Dobby mentioned that he had a big talk with the guys at half time. I mean, what were you would your words uh, to the players at half time? Oh, pretty, pretty much boiled down to uh, we played all the rugby in their half and we actually were bashing at them for, for 90 percent of the time so it was literally just a couple of errors handling errors uh being late at the breakdown that gave them the, the exit so i felt i felt as a team we were, we had great momentum even though the scoreboard didn't say it um i think it was just like almost reinforcing the team and saying listen yeah our plan is working we're playing rugby in the right areas it was all about just finishing those moments and and i must say like after half time that spark came up and and the things just started to stick. So I also think making 112 tackles in the in the half of rugby does take a lot out of your legs. And I mean you see it often the teams that, that defend most of the game tend to tie the most. So I think we just kept bashing and kept the pressure on and in the second half it started to stick. So all credit to the guys. Oh, well, just, just like the spark. You must be very happy that Ivan was, was back and his impact on the base was massive. Yeah, it looked like the to be honest, it felt like it looked like to me from the thing like the old Evan. You know, I, I think didn't think we started this season. Yeah, I think he was heavily marked at the start of the season when he played those games, and that felt pretty much like uh, the old Evan. You know, I'm very pleased. I mean, it's a massive risk. It's a massive asset for us going forward. And, uh, Robert, Robert, um, obviously, you guys are traveling now. Yeah, um, short week. Uh, what's the what's the schedule looking like for? Upcoming week just before the game. So the Duke of Wellington is a pub in uh, Belfast. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 this. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, no, um, it's tough. We, it, but again, uh, it, I don't want to use it. It's not a, it's, we, we leave tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We play next Friday night in Belfast. Um, Dad, Dan won't be coming. Uh, Kids is obviously starting his resting protocol. So yeah, it's a, it, we still play like a very nice young team that's going to give it a go. Um, even when last week you have a holiday, uh, from two years ago, <laughs> are you going on holiday now? You're going to go on my watch. <laughs> 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 But you must feel like it's been like, you know, I mean, it's been a, a great season. I mean, you led these guys to, to glory of USC. And it must feel like it's almost like in the same season because you haven't had a break since then. Yeah, I think it's uh, everything just almost merges into one at, at some stage. So for me, it's just all about playing a match, being able to recover, and then being up for the next one. So I think uh, probably my body needs it more than anything else. I think mentally I'm still there to be able to pitch up every weekend and play. Um, so I think it's good for my body, but also I'll be supporting the guys from the sideline and giving criticism and, and some advice where I can. But uh, yeah, um, I'm definitely going to enjoy this break, put my feet up, have a couple of cold ones, and and see the boys in a couple of weeks. Well, my final question, just um, for Springbox, um, could you tell us the names who will be exactly resting? Um, the ones we are obliged to rest are Kitsi, Damien, France, but he's always resting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's injured. No, he's injured. Uh, those, is anybody else who's starting the comp? Marvin. In another week, I think. Marvin. Yeah, Marvin. Another exactly. uh, and, and the rest. Uh, so the the various things. The rest and the rest fall under franchise management. There's there's rest we have to give them. They rest within our. You know, we make we do the planning with with SA rugby. But the compulsory guys out. Could, I just want to say on Kitsy, you know, he's now by quite a bit the most well three or four five six caps most cap storm of all time. But he's an exceptional leader. And, uh, I think as a union, uh, we couldn't be prouder or more grateful to him what he's put in. What he's Honestly, I mean, like you suggested, Gav, to go from winning the ERC, playing against Wales, to rugby championship, come back, Captain of the Storm, come back, end of year tour, come back, Captain, but all that he is now, it's a remarkable, remarkable feat to a great, 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 probably one of the greatest storms of all time, yeah. So, right, I mean, so, you shift our team, I mean, before your injuries and all that, I mean, and you, um... He's just elbowed me. <laughs> 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 no, look, we got to, we, we actually really, really blessed, you know, Dion Free is a great captain, a great, Marvin's doing a great job. You'll captain us next week in um, in, in Ulster. Um, somebody, I'm oh, sorry. I'll announce it on Monday. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'll, I'll be this, uh, 
a Chief is also good. I'll announce it on Monday. <laughs> Here's my. So, but you mentioned now uh, gets his leadership, but we also see Marty next to the field also assisting. Is that the culture in the, the squad as well, in terms of counting on that experience of players and the value that they add with the younger guys as well? I mean, that's, uh, yeah, that, that's what makes me the happiest. Uh, probably what gives the most rewarding from a coaching. Marty, we gave him this week and next week right off. Go away, you know, arrest him. We, we, he's under franchise management. And he asked us to in Cape Town another week to be at this game, radiated up. And, and yeah, we had a similar thing with Bloma last week. So it's, 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 it's amazing. And now he obviously can't be radiated up in Ulster. Actually, we're announcing the team. On... <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, 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 that's, you're absolutely right. That's the culture we want here. You want all the injured guys, yeah, those guys in the change room. We want to create a sense of belonging and inclusion. And yeah, I think Marnie was great today. When does your, your new recruiter um, link up with the team? Uh, I'm going to announce it on Monday. Did you have a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he'll yeah. be with, on Monday. Is he gonna be, so he's going to join you over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 uh, probably as soon as I get to London, be on the water. <laughs> I don't want to put them uh, you on the spot, but um, maybe just on, on Dan and the London combination. Does it give you a sense of that? Long, long, pretty, um, uh, combination. I mean, you have that enforced self defense and someone who can, with this sway of his hips, and break a light. I later, I hadn't thought of that, but it's a great analogy. Uh, I, I would agree with it completely. I could speak longer now for the sake of it, but you spot up, it does give you that, that sense. Uh, uh, yeah, so really exciting. I mean, what, what's nice for us, you know, we've tanked a little bit. Now they're the established, great, established number one combination by stretch, and I think they're going really nicely. Yeah. There's a question for Dan. Um, just uh, on the same subject, almost uh, playing with uh, John Wick, um, back, <laughs> maybe there's uh, all those touches on the on the grass. Yeah, yeah, it brings back a lot of memories. Yeah, uh, lots of instinctive stuff that comes through when you play ten and twelve together. Yeah, yeah. As I said, it brings back a lot of memories from when we were younger. Um, but yeah, obviously I haven't played a lot of them. He's re just recently come back, so it's also obviously just good to see him on the field. Went through a tough time, with, uh, yeah, very tough time with the knee injuries. Um, so I think yeah, almost like a, a lifeline at Western Province, and now he's taking his chance with with two hands, and he's doing really well. So really glad for him. Yeah. Oh, but just in terms of the Champions Cup, uh, you don't know if you're going to play it. It's okay, so I don't know, but you've got a home playoff. Uh, that's a great achievement going forward. Yeah, I just take the mic on the way up. You know, we sort of. Live every week with must win games and staying alive. And, and sometimes better just like try and take a look. If you'd said a, I said a year and a half ago, you are champions, Heineken Cup playoffs at home. It, it's, 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 it's a massive credit to this group uh, to, to achieve this. So that we, yeah, yeah, after the first half, it was so, what's the word? You know, anxious is probably the word, disappointed. And also, you know, I said that. We we got a lot about poor crowds and that sort of thing. So that there were sixteen, how many? Maybe seventeen. Seventeen thousand um, for half past ten, which is a, a terrible time for rugby traditionally in the in in in, in the Cape or well, anywhere. And then um, you know we, we, everybody was paid early. It was Christmas, New Year it hasn't been paid yet. I think to get seventeen thousand extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I suppose to we were, we were so keen to. Reward them. That first half felt awful. I've actually got to say sorry you know, to everybody who went in half time. I'm really sorry. Uh, but um, and, and one of our drivers, Stephen spoke to the team today about it. One of our drivers was to be able to play a Champions League knockout cup, knock game here at this stadium, which is going to be brilliant. I'm so pleased we've achieved that. And if one or two results go our way, be that tomorrow to lose or in the last 16 game, maybe a quarter, we don't know. But uh, it's brilliant to be hosting that year. Yeah, I'm just thinking the, the, the kicking the long kicks for. for Taking the, the shots and goal in that first half. Obviously, you, you guys will convert it um, you know, on attack. So, for that the reason? Yeah, it's, uh, I put a lot of faith in, in, in my tens or the guys who go for post. So, I mean, that first shot, I think Kate missed by a couple of maybe a meter to the left, but he came to me and said, confident to go for post. And 
and we actually just wanted to get some points in the scoreboard. So with the second kick, he was confident. He came to me and said, let me, let me just take a shot to a, a post. And I mean, that's how we started off. Uh, so I had the confidence if they give a penalty away any anywhere in the mid third, um, we can actually get some points on the scoreboard. Cool. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great weekend. No, there's no one on Zoom. It's fine. Yeah. Zoom's done. Yeah.